All right, everybody. Here we go. You ready, Ruta? I sure am, you handsome devil. <laughs> Thank you. I want to make sure this we haven't started yet, but I want to make sure we use that. Get ready for the season premiere of Hosts at Home. On today's show, she's a Hollywood legend, a game show hostess, and a woman whose memoir is called Consider Your Ass Kissed. Yep, the legendary Ruta Lee is on the show. And now, here's your host who interviews the host, Adam Wurzel. We are back. Thanks, Richard. Hey, everybody. I'm Adam Wurzel. Welcome to season four of Hosts at Home, still the show where we chat with your favorite hosts, past and present. We kick off this season with a legend. Before there was Vanna White. No, in fact, before there was Wheel of Fortune, this game show hostess ruled the airwaves. She's worked with everybody from Burt Reynolds to Clint Eastwood to Alex Trebek. A true honor to have Ruta Lee join us. Hi, Ruta. Nice to see you. Wow, what a lovely introduction. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm delighted to be with you and with your followers. God bless us all. It's so nice. I've never had somebody with their pool in the background. That's your actual pool behind you, correct? It certainly is. I don't fool around. I give you the real thing, darling. <laughs> Tell everybody where home is for you. Home is right in Hollywood, California, the wonderful world famous Hollywood. And the nice part is that my house was once lived in by Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles. So I keep going up and down the stairs, rubbing my ass on the walls, assuming all the glamour will come off. You know, Onto mine, I mean. <laughs> well, when I think of you, Ruta, I think a lot of people, when they think of you, they think glamour, they think Hollywood. And I have to tell you, you look fantastic. I mean, you just better than ever. Ruta, what is the secret? The secret is paint, <laughs> lots of paint, <laughs> lots of stucco, lots of spackle, lots of paint. <laughs> uh, they had a lot of and stucco. That, you know what it is? It's having, I think, my big blessing, along with having Lithuanian roots and therefore strength, uh, uh, is having an outrageously wild sense of humor. And I think that I kind of laughed my way through every misery that there is. I managed to giggle and say, and find something sunny in it. I just want to make note that I looked, I love your, your necklace that says Ruta. I thought it said rum when I first looked at it. And then I realized it said Ruta. Makes it more says sense. Ruta. And what's more, this darling little sprig of Ruta was done by an artist in Chicago that took a real piece of ruta for which I am named, which is a fragrant flowering herb that grows all over Eastern Europe. And it is the national symbol of Lithuania, much the way the maple leaf is to Canada. The symbol of Lithuania is a sprig of ruta. Brides wear garlands of it in their hair. It's sung about in every song. It's painted into every painting. It's every, every poet writes it. Theater curtains have a sprig of ruta embroidered on them. So that was done for me by darling friends in Chicago. And that's a sprig of ruta in gold. The artist took a real piece, so pressed it into wax, then poured the gold in it. And so I'm proudly wearing it. And we are so I'm glad you noticed. And I'm so proud that we now have a sprig of Ruta on host at home. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Get ready for a sprig of Ruta. I, I want to talk about your childhood because you were young. I think you were only 12 or 13 when you moved to, to California from Canada. I was more like 10 or 11 when we yeah. came in. And so I, I did my basic growing up, going to parochial schools, the nuns were mean as hell, but boy, they gave me an education. And I, I, to this day, I think I'm surviving on what I learned in grade school in, in Canada, in Montreal, where I was born. And somehow California beckoned. And it, it was miraculous that we got the visas to get here. And uh, how we got it, I don't know. It must have been my mother's prayers. I think my mother's prayers got me through a lot of things in this life. And uh, so I always kind of thank her for everything she ever did for me. Thank you, mom. Thank you to all the moms 
Every All year. the moms. You know, Ruta, you have such an incredible career. I, I think I could probably talk to you for five days, but we-, we oh, let's do. <laughs> let's, let's do. It. Let's chat. I think that, you know, I want to make this kind of the best of Ruta Lee. And the first sitcom I ever remember watching growing up was not I Love Lucy, but The Lucy Show. The Lucy Show. And you were uh-huh. on The Lucy Show, Lucy's temporary secretary. Hello. Oh! Tell us about working with Lucille Ball. Well, as you probably know, Lucille worked the four camera system, which for your audience that doesn't quite understand, there are four cameras shooting at the same time, different directions, different locations, and they're getting different points of view. They're getting Lucy, they're getting a close up of Lucy, they're getting me if I'm the guest star, uh, a close up of me. And so when the scene is being staged, it has to be staged just like a dance, just like a ballet, because you have to be very careful not to step into across a line where they're shooting and my nose will be in her close up. You know, you have to be very careful and you have to be good at what you're doing. But the nice part is, is that it's done with an audience, a live audience where there is nothing better than performing to lots of live people rather than just the camera. Uh, The camera finds every little flaw you have. It also finds every bit of magic you've got, but you have to play to the camera and that's a very tough thing to do, but playing to an audience just makes it so much happier and so much easier. And when you weren't on a sitcom or a drama or a sci-fi or any kind of, you've done everything, High rollers. Now a game of high stakes where every decision is a gamble and every move can be your last. High rollers. I just love this game show and we have a lot of game show fans that watch this show. First question, I feel like every major game show is getting rebooted nowadays. Do you think High Rollers deserves a reboot? I think it does. Uh, I don't know who would replace my darling Alex, who, by the way, Adam did the foreword to my book titled Consider Your Ass Kiss. Oh, I I just think it's time for game shows. I'm getting so tired of the kind of stuff that we've been seeing. I miss our good old sitcoms. I miss the dramas. Uh, there's some very, very good stuff on television. I will, I will not deny that. But I just don't think that the personalities of all of the people that were so important to all of us while we were growing up are terribly important to the people that they're watching now. And you and Alex, that I think you, you hit it right on the head. Hit the nail on the head, Ruta, because personality. I mean, you and Alex together on that show, really, there was, before there was Chuck Woolery and Susan Stafford or, or Pat Sajak and Vanna White or Howie Mandel and the Deal or No Deal models. It was you. Do you consider yourself a trendsetter in the world of game shows? I don't consider myself a trendsetter in any department. Really? However, it was kind of fun to be one of the first, you know, and I, I've always said Vanna, who is one of the sweetest girls in the world, is the luckiest girl in America to be paid that kind of money to do what she does. I'm wildly jealous of her. <laughs> and you know what? Vanna would say the exact same thing. Vanna would laugh at you at first because she, she gets it, but she she's an incredible human being. And so- She's a darling girl, an absolutely darling girl. And so are you. T- tell everybody how you got the job on High Rollers. Was it Meryl Heater or Bob Quigley that approached you? I had done a lot of shows for them. They produced a lot of game shows. And Mary Markham uh, was my very good friend. And she is the booker of talent for the game shows, for talk shows, for appearances, period. And so she used me often. 
And, uh, you know, I did Hollywood squares and everything else. And, and she suggested me for high rollers. And they said, sure, that's a great idea. Came in, met with Alex Trebek. We fell in love with each other, both Canadian born, you know, he was born in Sudbury, Ontario. I was the next province over, but we were really good chum. Alex had an extraordinary, almost bizarre sense of humor. He was wildly funny. He could do every accent in the world. His father was Russian, his mother was French. So he really knew accents and he knew how the, the idiomatic kind of thing that went with every nationality. And Lord, he had me laughing at all times. Put us in the room where it happened. I didn't mean to just reference Hamilton by, with, by saying room where it happened, but put us into that room where you first met Alex. What, what was the first reaction like? Was it just instantaneous connection and instantaneous yeah. camaraderie? It was instantaneous. It was, it was reach out and take a hand and know that that was going to be your partner for a while. And uh, so it was a very, very happy time of my life, High Rollers was. That's incredible. Did you become really close friends with Peter Marshall when you were doing- Oh, home? yes. Yeah, I, I, I was, I've heard that you're both friends still to this day. Oh, yeah. Yes, and, and he was a very good friend of Alex's as well. He's what, 90, I don't know, two, three, somewhere in there. But he looks fantastic. Handsome, wonderful, and one of the best singers you've ever heard. Wow. Well, Peter Marshall is one of our favorites here. We've not had him on the show yet, but Peter, if you're watching, we'd love you to have him. You must get him. He's, he, he will do it. He will. Your stories are so incredible. We, we have to talk about your career um, on the big screen. Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. What My first job. They, I think that the phrase that comes to mind when I watch a movie like that is, they just don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't. And, and how beautifully that movie holds up. And how beautifully, uh, I also worked for the, the director again when I did Funny Face. That movie holds up beautifully. Witness for the Prosecution, which I'm very proud of, also holds up beautifully. Uh, almost everything, well, I did a, a few bummers, but uh, what the heck. You know, we all have. Everything. We all have. A job is a job. And, and uh, as darling Lawrence Olivier put it, he said, there are no small parts, there are only small actors. And so therefore that kind of wakes you up to the fact that you, you are grateful to get whatever work comes your way and be happy for it and you're gonna learn something from it. Ruta, that sound that you just heard, that means it is time for the lightning round. You didn't hear that sound, correct? <laughs> you got it, darling. Yes. Here's how it's going to work. Very easy. We're going to name a TV show, something that happened in your life, some, something from your incredible career. All you need to do is tell us the first thing that comes to your head. Maybe it's a story. Maybe it's an anecdote. Maybe it's a funny thing that happened on set. Are you ready? Are you up for the challenge, Ruta? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. First one, Dragnet. Oh my God, a oh, fabulous man. Um, oh my Lord, the star, Jack Webb, who I just watched last night in a movie on, uh, he was tough, but good. Wow. How about auditioning for Gilligan's Island? <laughs> my boobs weren't big enough. Tina Louise got the job, the bitch. <laughs> She's darling and very pretty. How about Roseanne? Oh, I was scared to death of her. I thought she's a tough broad. She doesn't like people. She gave me the greatest compliment in the world by saying our show would have been nothing without the addition of Ruta Lee. And I was hoping that it was going to continue forever and I would have an ongoing role as a lipstick lesbian. Don't you love that idea? And, uh, and then it got canceled. Damn, damn, damn. How about being a voice on the Smurfs? <laughs> it is such fun to do anything where you're just a voiceover. I love the fact that proper human beings, actors with some repute, sit on stools and make funny sounds and make funny voices and get paid for it. Woo, it's wonderful. 
Tell us about the show First and Ten. Ah, it was a series that I did with Delta Burke and a lot of big, hunky football players that looked like they were murderous, but were all darling pussycats. The one that was not the pussycat that was in the show was O.J. Simpson. Thank you very much. I won't say anything more about him. No, no need. How about Fantasy Island? Ah, De Plain, De Plain. Uh, Ricardo Maltabon was one of the loveliest gentlemen in show business. What a nice, sweet, honorable man. I will not say the same for that little putz that played. <laughs> what was his name? Well, I can't remember. Irville Lachaise. Irville Lachaise was his name, but, uh, but his character name, I don't know. But he, he thought he was a ladies' man and came on kind of strong and was a little stupid. I love these stories so much. I have one more that I'm going to mention. Who nanny who? <laughs> who knew that Johnny Cash was going to be the big star that he became? And he was in that silly movie. And it was a little silly, but it was fun. And uh, I, I loved working at MGM where it was made. Uh, let me think. Who I can't even remember everybody's name that was in it. But uh, it, it was a, a fun movie and what the heck. All I can remember is Johnny Cash, big star. Well, Ruta, it's just me here right now in my kitchen, but I'm going to give you a standing ovation here. I'm going to give you a standing <laughs> ovation. Um, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome. I want to talk about this incredible book that you have out. We mentioned it earlier. I just love the title. Alex Trebek wrote the forward. Tell everybody a little bit more about it. And you've got a special offer for our viewers as well, correct? I, I hope I do. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm, anybody wants a signed copy, go to harryedmonds.com and just order it and send in who you want it addressed to and who you want it signed to. And I will go into the shop or he'll come up to the house and do it for me. Uh, or go to your regular little bookstore. Boy, they need the help. We've been so out of business. And I cover a lot of Hollywood territory in it. Uh, I, I bring up a lot of stars and people. Everybody that reads the book will know who I'm talking about. Well, that is amazing. And so many more stories, like you said, than we have had time for here. Ruta, wow. What an honor it has been to talk to you. I am, uh, I am virtually rolling the dice to you, Rudely. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. You are not only adorable, you're very handsome. Thank your mommy for raising a good guy like you. And I'm happy to have you in my life, my friend. I am so happy to thank you so much for, for saying that. Guess what, Ruta? What? We have we have an amazing show next week here on Host Ooh. Home. Richard, Richard Malmus, our announcer, is here. Who's on the show next week? Next time on Host at Home. It's been almost 30 years since he hosted his first game show. And now he's got a brand spanking new one. The Word Game Key. From Caesars Challenge and Tug of Words, NFL legend Damon Rashad joins us. <laughs> Back to you, Adam. If you like what you see, and I'm assuming you love what you see, please hit that subscribe button. It is on your screen right now. Just click subscribe. We greatly appreciate the love. The amazing, the talented, the legendary Ruta Lee has been our guest today on Hosts at Home. We will see you next time. My name is Adam Wurzel. As usual, I don't close the show. Ruta Lee, over to you. I'm going to close the show by saying, I've got to go set the table. I've got Sally Struthers and Ann Jillian coming for dinner today. Eat your hearts out, everybody. Goodbye for now. I love you.